going over macros is, a, for me, I like to have things very simple because like you mentioned earlier, life happens. And so when you're having to count calories or try to figure out what to eat in the day, it's just an, another added task that can get to be quite of a headache. First, um, just like to meet you where you're at as far as your knowledge with it. So what do you know about macros? Well, I think I believe there's like three main groups, carbs, proteins, and, and fat. I know I mainly have to focus on more protein. So instead of this overwhelming food pyramid that had seven different things on it can get really confusing, especially when they were telling us that carbs needs to be the one that we need to eat the most. You're having a realization that we need to eat protein the most. Most of us women are protein deficient because we've been dieting for the majority of our life to try to shrink ourselves to weight loss, which we clearly, if it worked, we wouldn't be on this call today. The, what I like is now using three macros, which is a very common thing amongst the fitness industry that everyone's gravitated because it's so easy to think of three rather than seven. So you're exactly mm -hmm. right. So carbs, protein, fast, and what macro stands for is macronutrient means the, the main means the majority, like the main focus is really what it is. So as you can see here, that majority of these macros actually do blend into each other. So you'll see here that there'll be like a, a carb and a protein, or there'll be like a protein and a fat. So depending on like what it is. So for example, an egg, if you have an egg yolk in it, the yolk is the fat and the egg is the protein. So that's why you'll have kind of that blend usually. Okay. So next one is really understanding your habits. And so you sending me pictures of your food kind of give me an insight as far as what your top meals and snacks are. So this page, I'm just going to skip and I'm going to actually use your live images that you've sent over to me. Okay. So here's a very easy th three-step process on how to actually find out what your macro percentages are. So the first one is really what are the, what's the goal? Your goal for every plate, if you look at it to be a hundred percent, you want your protein to be about 50 to 70% of your plate. Your net carb, which we'll go into in just a moment, was the goal to be around zero to 30% and your fats to be about 10 to 30%. Where these numbers are taken from is any woman that's over the age of 30 years old, this is where her macro percentages should be if she's looking to sculpt and tone her body. Now, these percentages will be entirely different if you are 80 years old and you have a different goal, or if you're 20 years old and you want to run a marathon, totally different macros. But these are, again, very specific to sculpting and toning the body, getting definition and seeing a more leaner body. So when we look at a plate, we're going to do two different ways. One, just by visually looking at the food. And the other one is actually looking at the back of a nutrient label. So we're going to learn both of those techniques today. I want to know what is actually the protein in it. So right here, I can see it looks like a bunch of egg whites, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, what else would be protein in this? Uh, the turkey slices that I added. Okay, how many turkey slices do you think you added? I put two. And then how much egg whites do you think was in there? It was like a three-fourths of a cup. And anything else as far as protein that could be like spinach or it could be nuts and seeds? I, I had spring mix in there. I had some spinach. Not a whole lot, but a little bit still adds up. Okay. So spinach actually does have protein in it. All right. So now let's find our carbs. What would be the carbs in this? Rest of the spring mix and the tomato. Yeah. So anything, vegetables, fruit, breads, all that type of stuff essentially is a carb, which is way different than our food pyramid, right? There was, it broke up those carbs into different categories, but yes, the yeah. carb is the, the veggies. I don't see any other carb in here. Um, the next would be fats. What would be your fats here? What did you cook it with? Oh, I may have used butter. So yeah. Yeah. Usually butter, oil, something like that. Right. So that's our fats. So now the second step one. is we want to find what the net carb is. Do you know what a net carb stands for? Mm. Okay. I'm going to teach you. So carbs minus the fiber equals the net carb. What net carb essentially stands for is really what we count. Because mm. when the fiber is so heavily in a item such as vegetables, it essentially cancels itself out, therefore making it not even really a carb. What we would actually look at is that there's really not many carbs in here. It'd be very, very low percentage. We're talking like maybe 5%, 1% of your meal, technically. Like it's really, really small as you overall. So that's the first step is finding the net carb within about five seconds. It doesn't have to take a whole lot because that's when we're just too much in the details and we don't need to become a master scientist on learning every single percentage. I just look at it as an overall view of what the plate looks like. So I'm going to make a guess. Um, three-fourths cup of egg whites, two turkey slices, spinach, 
and looking at the overall plate, meaning like as a whole, um, knowing that my carbs are like 5% or less and the butter has got to be really small, I would have to imagine that this plate is somewhere around 80% or more with protein. Your net carbs has got to be like really low, anywhere from five to 10%. And your butter has got to be somewhat similar, something really low, five to 10%, five, five, yeah, five to 10%, really, really low. So then we ask ourselves, mm -hmm. did it fit into the goal? Yes. Okay, so this was not only like an A, it's an A++++. plus plus plus. really gives you yep. confidence on knowing like what you're eating and how to eat. So let's go to the next one. Do you actually have this RX bar in your house by chance? So we can actually look at the nutrition label. Yeah, I can go get it. Yeah. Okay. So when you look at the nutrition label, there's really only four things that we're going to look at. So what is your protein? 10. Got it. And what is your carbs? 29 grams. 29 minus the fiber. So how much fiber is in there? Uh, fiber is four. Great. So that's going to give me a total of 25 and fats. What would be the fat grams? The fat, total fat says 10 grams. Okay. Great. So if I'm looking at 10 grams, 25 grams, and 10 grams, what do you think my percentages would be? I'm going to give you a little crack at it. Yeah. So somewhere around, um, somewhere around here. Way over. And I just kind of give it more like that. So that way, if you're kind of a little bit uncertain, I usually kind of go oh, 10, 10 to 20%. Like you don't have to be like a specific number, just kind of go into that. So then you ask yourself, okay, did your protein, did it make it? No. Okay. That's okay. Because guess what? In your first meal, you had an extra 10%. Oh, so keep that in mind. Instead of looking at what your body's going to look like in just this meal, your body is more of an overview of a day and your weeks and your months. So the fact right. that you had more protein in your in your egg whites or your egg white breakfast or lunch, whatever it was, now is going to help you balance this out. So it means that we don't have to not eat this RX bar. That's why this program really teaches food freedom is because we can learn to start to kind of manipulate it. So we know that we're a little bit low in our protein. We definitely know that we're a little high in our carbs and our fats is okay. So what we want to do with our next meal is, which you did, you hired your protein and your vegetables to really equal this out. You balanced it by just making sure your next meal is better. What we could also do if we wanted to balance this particular meal, what do you think we could do to add something to this snack to actually balance it out? Add something that is more purely protein driven. Like, a, I don't know, a protein shake or something like that. Boom. I have these yeah. at least once or twice a day because you're going to notice it's quite difficult to get up to that 50 to 70% in every yeah. single meal. Not every meal is going to be perfect like this. And so being able to quickly grab a protein shake would immediately have bumped this into a better ratio. So did I Got tell it. you that you can never have this RX bar again? <laughs> no, <laughs> thankfully, because I don't kind of like it. <laughs> Exactly. Right. So that's, what's really so cool about it is you still can be able to enjoy the foods that you like, but just be able to learn how to modify them. Okay. So now I'm going to make you do this one. So this one's your baby right here. So let's do the first step, which is what are the actual protein in this? The protein, I think it's the egg white, the turkey slices and the cheese, I think, although cheese is, I think, fatty too. Mm -hmm. Um, that bread is actually, it has some protein, like five grams, I think. Love it. And then I also see a yolk in there. So that will be our fat too, right? Yes. Cool. And the butter, I added a bit of butter. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. So now we can, uh, next step is finding our net carb. So did this, uh, bread by chance, just off the top of your head, does it have higher fiber than just like a typical piece of white bread? It, it does. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Which is great because if those bread have a bunch of seeds in it, we know that seeds have protein and some healthy fats. And if it has a lot of fiber, it, the net carb of it actually will lower itself. So instead of looking at this piece of toast as one slice of toast, we can now look at it as like almost maybe like a three fourths instead of thinking of it as like a whole, you can actually start to, to okay. trim it down a little bit. So now that okay. we have that awareness and that really is our net carb, 
Now, how would you say your percentages are? Not being a perfectionist, in five seconds, right. it's pretty easily to grasp. I would actually say that it's like 50 to 60 in protein, or at least 50. Mm -hmm. um, the carbs are maybe 15% or something like that. Mm -hmm. And the fat is, I don't know, whatever <laughs> percentage is left. Yeah, it's kind of whatever's left. So we got maybe five. Five, five to 15 too, maybe. So somewhere around probably like 10 to 20%. Yeah. Let's ask yourself, um, did our protein fit the goal? I think so, yeah. Yep. Did our bread fit the goal? Yes. Okay. And did our fats fit the goal? Yes. Okay. So again, another A++. So now let's actually do a difficult one. You're being too much of an A plus student over here. Let's actually find one. <laughs> <laughs> Stop being so perfect over there. Um, <laughs> man, you're eating really good. Okay, man. Ooh, that one. Come on, where's your like chocolate and sweet tooth and sugary snacks over oh, here? Oh, I actually, I had, I have half a brownie during the weekend while traveling, and I was like, why am I eating this? But I, I haven't met a brownie that I don't like, to be honest. Okay, great. So without even looking at anything and just remembering that brownie, give me a, in two <sighs> seconds what you think the percentages of that would be. Honestly, it's like <laughs> 60% carbs and the rest is probably fat. Okay. So, I'm not sure it has any protein at all. So it's really heavy in, in carbs and fats. Now, what can we do for our next meals or adding something to that brownie that can change the percentages? Oh, make the, the next meal very heavy, I would say. Um, or eat, eat a shake with it, like a protein shake. I don't know if I have to eat the brownie, which sometimes I do. Which I do too. I ha I'm able to have- I feel horrible about it. I don't know why. It's because we've been living our living the past programs of the guilt and shame that have created a toxic relationship to food. So this isn't your toxicity to have. This is now your turn to give it back to all those fitness programs out there that have created this belief and now go into a new viewpoint of how we look at food. Now, it doesn't mean go eat brownies every day because that's obviously not going to fit into your percentages, but it allows you to be able to still have a brownie but learn that your next couple of meals can actually still reverse your percentages for the day and you can still have a really badass day. But the common mistake that people have is they have something bad, they feel bad, the guilt and shame last longer like weeks and months and sometimes years of what that can do. It's crazy, I'll jump on a call with someone and they're like, I'm still thinking about that brownie and it was three weeks ago. And I'm like, when are we gonna let that go? Because that is it's only gonna hold you back. And so right now I want you to take this moment and I want you to release that. So speak to yourself right now, releasing any of that guilt and shame and moving forward. So what does that look like? If you were to forgive yourself, what does that look like? First of all, it will help me not feel like I'm going to quit the whole thing or like I'm not going to reach my goal. Okay. That is huge, Jamie. I have not realized that. I think I, I, I do that sort of like, oh, I ate the thing that I wasn't supposed to. So. It takes me a while to recuperate and go back into the into my flow again. Exactly. And so being able to now find yourself in balance, find yourself in that flow. And if you have a brownie, no big deal. Add a protein shake or have your next meals be better. And start, do you feel the control? You can start actually taking over how you can look and feel and your relationship with food. Yeah, it's kind of, it's simple, but mind blowing at the same time. Very, very, very proud of you to get to this is a really big moment. I want you just to take a moment and just feel that because that's that's a lot of that's a lot of growth. And I'm really I'm really proud of you for doing that. So keep in mind, anytime you send me pictures of your food, I'm not judging you. I'm not critiquing you. I don't care what you're eating. I'm just going to show you how I'm going to give you the knowledge so you can experience what you just felt right now. Awesome. Is it way different than other programs you probably have joined? Oh, yeah. I'm for your power backs. You know that this program has nutrition, workouts, and mindset. So as you go through these, I want you to put what you were before the program, what you are today, 
and just be truthful with your answers. Remember, I'm not judging you. I'm not critiquing you. Full honesty is where we grow. And that's where I can actually give you the lessons for the next calls. A couple of different ways that people do this. They'll send me pictures of their food. And then below that, they'll just tell me what their macros are of what they think it is. And it's just good a practice for you to kind of do that. Other option is some members really like to use this macro journal. This is actually available. I'll send it over to you where you just write down your date and what your macro percentages are. And we'll look at your overall day and just see if you were able to work with your, within your macros. Thank you so awesome. much. Yeah. Well, you have an amazing rest of your day and start taking control over your life and those macros. I'm excited to hear about it. Thank you. Take Bye. care.